thanks for coming to the early edition here. Okay. Yeah, no feedback. Okay, very good. Yay. All right. Um, well, no. All right. Yeah, maybe. Uh, yeah, maybe facing it away from me. It's um, okay. How's that work? Kind of. All right. No. Yeah, and it's feeding right back. Okay. Okay. Now. One, two, three, four. Testing, test, test, test. ZQ, ZQ, Whiskey for Linux. Yeah, lots of feedback. Okay. All right. Hey, it's Saturday morning at 0900. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, my name's Daryl uh, Kilo India for Long Live America. And I'm also part of the special event station running out in the hallway here, uh, Whiskey for Linux or Lima. And. We're going to talk about uh, Linux with a side of ham and pie. So I'm, I'm taking most everyone here as a ham radio operator already, kind of. I'm seeing a lot of people nodding their head. Okay. How many, how many people are already running, like, digital modes? Or is digital modes just something new? Okay. So, so more, a couple, but more new. And that was, that's what I was kind of, uh, that's what I was kind of shooting for was, to talk about some of these digital modes for someone who hasn't tried them yet, and uh, with a, with an emphasis on open source software on Linux. So, and how many how many people are familiar with Raspberry Pi and already have? Oh, okay, almost everyone's familiar with Raspberry Pi. Okay, all right. Well, good because that was that was the other thing I was going to emphasize was things that you could run on a Raspberry Pi and make it portable. Um, if you're going out in the field for like field day or uh, emergency com communications or something like that, so so I've got I've got the uh, the rig up here in the front and I will be operating the rest of the day out in the hallway. So for people that want to come by and see it um, in action. So the next slide then is kind of a moot point because almost everyone's already familiar with the Raspberry Pi. But just for just for the sake of sa sake of conversation, this small credit card sized computer. Um, you got the uh, Raspberry Pi Zero, which is a single core CPU and very small, and then the regular uh, Raspberry Pi Three with a quad core um, CPU, and then using an SD card for your for your storage and your operating system, and. Uh, What's really fun, it runs just multiple different versions of Linux, but uh, I pretty much stick with the, with the Raspbian that the Raspberry Pi Foundation comes out with. So um, as far as the, the rig is concerned, um, and I don't have a, a picture of it for the, for the video, but just uh, people that are watching the video, just imagine. So um, 
I have a, a Res Pad, which is a Raspberry Pi computer with a, with a 10 inch LCD screen. So it's kind of a self-contained um, Raspberry Pi they can take on the road. And it's plugged into a Signalink USB modem, and that's the kind of the key to all the, the trick to getting everything connected and running these digital modes is the, is the USB modem. Um, so once you plug it in, it just recognizes it as a sound card. And as I'll uh, kind of show in some of the software, then you just pick that, the signal link as your, your sound card in the software. Um, but the, the first thing I looked at um, was some software that can run on a Raspberry Pi or on Linux for, for logging and people that are into contesting. And um, probably five, six years ago, it, there wasn't too much to choose from, but it's, when I was researching for this talk, it's like, hmm, there's, there's a few more choices that are out there now. Um, this uh, CQR log um, looked like a, a really advanced uh, program uh, based on a, a MySQL database. Um, and it looked like it would be um, a good choice if for someone just doing a lot of contesting and doing uh, you know some uh, a, a lot of logging. And the the only uh, the only caveat I saw when I trying to install it was um, the MySQL database installs without a password by default, which isn't a super secure way of doing things. So. Um, so if if you are going to go down that down that path, it make sure you do default you do um, select some some passwords for your root MySQL database, unless you're running it on a Raspberry Pi and you don't care. But <laughs> anyway, uh, and I, I was also looking for uh, some some things that were recent. There there was some logging software out there that was quite old, and once I I looked it up, um, there wasn't anything current. Um, and then the one, uh, the one thing that I found with this Pi QSO, which uh, really kind of perked my interest because um, I'm interested in uh, programming in Python, and this was a uh, fairly decent logging program um, written in Python. Uh, with some with some fairly decent um, documentation. And nope, that wasn't what I wanted to do. I was going to try to jump out and just kind of run a couple of those programs. and get it up on the screen where you can see it. And of course, no, it doesn't doesn't want to work. Okay. I was trying to bring up the the CQR log just to kind of do a little demo there. Well, it worked yesterday. <laughs> anyway, all right, we'll try to do a demo with the Pi QSO. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, well, the question was what, what, how does this compare to like just using LibreOffice and a spreadsheet? Um, yeah, that that you know, just using a spreadsheet would be a a good a good way to go about it. And I've seen you know people have like created templates for that. Um, the CQ CQR log um, takes it like the next step um, beyond that because it also, uh, if you configure Hamlib, you can you can build in the radio control into it, 
And it also does like some automatic spotting, uh, DX spotting. And it it'll, if you configure it um, correctly, you get like a little world map and you can kind of see where stations are showing up uh, that, that you're trying to work. So uh, that's what made it kind of more of a contesting like package. Um, sorry, I can't get it to, to work right now. <laughs> but let's try, um, let's try PyLog. All right. So uh, PyLog is written in uh, Python 3, so you do have to um, have uh, Python, Python installed on your system. Which I do, I got 3.5. Um, and I'm using Ubuntu 16.04, so it also um, also has Python 2 on here. But um, well, I'm obviously not doing something right. Oh, because I'm typing the wrong command. That's silly me. There, that's better. And this uses uh, SQL Lite for the database, kind of built into it. And there, there's also a setting in there where you can, like, always go to, um, oh, well, I just want to open that database, not save. Well, anyway, I don't want to waste a lot of people's time with the, with the demo stuff there, but doing, doing live software demos during a talk is always dangerous, so. But uh, anyway, so this doesn't this doesn't have the by default have the uh, radio control and the DX spotting built in, but you do create a database and then create different tabs for different types of things that you want to do logging. Like if you want to log your um, VHF UHF contacts or log your satellite contacts, you can just create a separate database for the different kind of activities that you want to log. And this is free and open source, um, so it was just a matter of going to the uh, the GitHub page and getting downloading it from uh, the zip file from GitHub and um, just running make install and and you get it you get it up and going. So anyway, so that that's that's it for uh, contesting and logging and. Actually, I'm really old-fashioned. I have a notebook, <laughs> and I log on paper. Uh, I run a couple nets um, every week, and I just I just log on paper. Um, but like t today for the special event station, um, we're we're logging. I'll be logging the contacts in um, one of the pieces of software that I'm running uh, that'll be coming up. Uh, in the presentation, so I'm log I'm just logging it in the so in the software that I'm running. Um, I kind of asked if we wanted to like standardize on one, but um, it didn't. Uh, we didn't get that far. And and the bands haven't been great this weekend, so I think we've only made like a, do a dozen contacts or so. So, not like we're logging hundreds of um, contacts.
But uh, any any questions or discussions about uh, login software on Linux? Uh, anybody have something that they use, they like to throw out there, recommend to the group? Um, no, not really. Um, yeah, I'm not, I and mean, I'm not personally myself that big into contesting, but I know in the radio club uh, where I'm at up in Roanoke, there's several members that are really big into contesting, and uh, so they're using these. But uh, I haven't been able to convert uh, very many of the members of the radio club to Linux yet, So, but I'm still working on it. <laughs> so. so we'll move on next to uh, some software for doing digital modes. Um, so I, I looked at uh, some software for doing PSK31 and other related modes, uh, FT8 and uh, weak signal protocols, and um, also looked at something to uh, do a two meter packet with a wind link on on Linux, which that uh, is a, a bit of a bit of a challenge, but it, it actually is possible. So uh, for those that are hanging around for um, Sunday, Sunday morning, I'll be a talk doing a, a talk specifically just about WinLink 2000 and do, sending and receiving emails uh, over the air uh, with the Raspberry Pi. So a, a little little plug there for my talk on Sunday at again at 0900. So um, really appreciate everyone that came in this morning. <laughs> Uh, how, how many people are already trying like FL Digi then? Okay, a couple. Um, and when I was doing some research, I, was, I found that uh, several of the Linux distributions include FL Digi um, in the distribution, so it's, it's easy to get it installed and running. Uh, you can also go to their website and get the source code and uh, compile it for if it if it isn't already been compiled for your distribution of choice, you can get the source code from from the from the website, and um, and compile it on your platform. Uh, there's a little screenshot of FL Digi in uh, for PSK31, and um, that's what I'm going to be operating on on the on the ResPad this afternoon. And uh, talking about the, the logging, so FL Digi's got logging built in, and um, it's you got several uh, macro buttons where you can customize uh, calling CQ and answering a call, starting a starting a QSO, um, and the uh, what I the brag button where you know you put all your significant information on there, so. Um, and that's that's a, a lot of what go, what goes on in PSK31 is just making contacts and everyone kind of exchanging information about their uh, about their setup and their rig. Um, when up here in the top window, you're seeing what they're uh, what they're sending, what your typings in the in the middle window, and then the waterfall down here in the bottom where you can see the the, the signals and you can click on it to to, to see what they're see what they're typing. Uh, the, what I think is cool is up here when you're when someone's responding back to you, like you can click on, when they type in their name, you can click on their name and it populates it up here into the log section. If they say, you know, what their location is, you click on it. So just clicking on their responses op populates the log for you. And then um, when you finish the conversation, then you just click to save that contact and you move on to the next one. So so this after this morning, this afternoon, we're going to see how well that works. So uh, I've, I've worked with it a little bit and it seems to work fairly well on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, the next thing, uh, the next digital mode, and this seems to be really gaining popularity, FT8. Um, the weak, extremely weak signal um, protocols, and uh, some some of these uh, protocols were originally developed for moon bounce, and that's a really niche, small little sliver of ham radio. But um, someone I know up in uh, Augusta County um, in Virginia does a lot of moon bounce, and it's really impressive to see his antenna array and his 
is is set up for um, for doing moon bounce, but FT8 is some some of these protocols are made specifically for that extremely weak uh, signals that you get back. Um, and you can go to the WSTJ website, and uh, it's been it's been compiled uh, for several um, several platforms. And again, the source code's available if it's not available. Um, already compiled. Uh, I have I have yet to try this on the Raspberry Pi, but I don't see any reason why it wouldn't because they do have a uh, an ARM uh, an ARM version of it. So I don't see any reason why it uh, wouldn't work with the Raspberry Pi. And then what I'm calling the uh, the bleeding edge stuff. Um, so I just stumbled on this doing the research. Um, there was something called JS8 call, and it's like, hey, what's that? That's a, that's a, a wee bit different. And um, it's a it's a derivative of the of the FT8 software, and designed to operate a little bit more like PSK31, where it's keyboard to keyboard. Um, QSOs. FT8 is really just kind of, you're just getting a really short exchange of information and not really carrying on a conversation with the other person. You're just logging a contact and, and moving on and, and semi-automating it. But uh, JS8 call um, uh, has, has just been in beta and I think just recently, like in May, actually came out with a version 1.0 release. So it's like ready for uh, ready for people to jump in there and try it, and uh, so that's a that's an interesting one. And again, um, it has an ARM uh, version that's been compiled, so it should be able to to run on a Raspberry Pi. Anyone anyone else heard of JS8 Call or tried it? So some people have heard about it. Any any? Yeah, uh, it doesn't look like there there's a whole lot of people that are out. Uh, using it. So if you try JS8 call, you might just be just talking to yourself until um, some more people start trying it and uh, getting on there. Although I did see on their on their group's IO page, they are like organizing like monthly events where people, they coordinate a, a day and a time to get on the air with the JS8 call. So that looked interesting. So I'll move on next to um, talking about WinLink 2000. Um, so I'm, I'm grouping this in with a digital mode. It's not really for carrying on conversations and QSOs, but for uh, it's really been adopted in emergency communications uh, for being able to send email uh, over over the radio, over the air uh, in say like a worst case scenario where you don't have internet or um, cell phone coverage and uh, you, you need to you need to report back to uh, uh, emer emergency operations center or get um, like health and welfare messages out a um, couple couple different ways to do wind link is uh, on VHF UHF it's using packet radio um, I was first licensed in 2005, and packet radio was kind of fading out then. How many, how many people are like big fans of packet radio or operated much on packet radio? Yeah, that's that's. So what's what's left of packet radio is um, is uh, WinLink 2000. So you have uh, you'll have uh, lots of people, and there there you go to the WinLink 2000 website, and they have a. They have a web page where you can see wh who's running a node and what frequency they're running on. Um, and you can do uh, WinLink uh, over HF um, with a, a protocol called WinMore, which, you know, as all these n names imply, these were all written for, um, for Windows primarily. And there's a new uh, the new protocol that's kind of eventually going to be replacing WinMore that's more robust and um, and has uh, not so much Windows specific uh, called RDOP. But uh, on but on Linux you you can do um, 
some wind link. It's it's a uh, it's a program called Pat, and it's it's uh, written for uh, Windows, Mac, and Linux uh, in the Go programming language, and. Um, I think I'll, I'll, I'll try another live demo and see if I can get it to work. So it's, it, it's really interesting. You, you, uh, you install it and you, you launch it from the command line and then it's a, a web browser based interface um, for, um, for doing the WinLink. So since I'm not, I'm not eating up a whole lot of time here, so we'll, we'll try another live demo here from the, from the command line. So I've already gone through the steps of, of downloading um, the dev file and installing it. And then you just launch it um, with the option for the HTTP. And it helps if I put it over there where you can see it. There we go. Um, so you, you can actually run Pat just straight from the command line. But what's easier is to do a little GUI interface. So let's. Let's run that. And I'm open up a browser window on See, and that's that's it. So I've I've already uh, ran the configuration file. I put in my information, like my call sign, and um, and I've actually like received uh, an email. So how many people have, have used WinLink 2000 on Windows? And it's kind of seen. Okay, so y'all yeah, come back on Sunday at nine o'clock <laughs> where I'm talking about WinLink 2000. Um, so. Basically, um, you have an inbox, and you can compose an email, uh, and you can then, um, using the signal link, uh, connect it with your radio. So you go up there to the connect button, and um, There is, so if, if I'm going to use the Winmore protocol and do it over HF, um, you can pick uh, the AX25 is the, uh, the packet. If you're going to do VHF or UHF packet, or if you're going to use RDOP protocol, um, kind of cheating, but you can go ahead and check your email just over Telnet. If you have an internet connection and you're just you're at home and you don't want to bother hooking up your radio, but you want to see if if you've gotten any messages. You can just if you got internet access, you can check your email. And I'm not expecting anything to come in. Doesn't look like it, but uh, you can actually send and receive just email. But uh, like I said, it's it's primary for uh, emergency communications. But it's it's it's. Uh, we do, um, in our radio club, we do like monthly um, ARIES um, activities where we, we get on the air and we practice and, and uh, sending e uh, emails back and forth to each other with, uh, with WinLink is one of the activities that we do. So any questions about WinLink? You know, like I said, I'm going to get dive in, in deeper detail on that um, tomorrow. And uh, since since this is so early, I'm, I didn't. I've, this was really about it. I'm just going to open it up if anyone had some um, questions or discussions, but um, just kind of a, a, a kind of a taste of um, some digital modes. Um, how many people like podcasts? Listening to podcasts, so. 
if you haven't already heard about it, Linux and the Ham Shack is, is a really great uh, podcast to listen to. You can go to their website and uh, listen to uh, their live streams when they, um, when they broadcast on Mondays or listen to their recordings. But um, uh, put a little uh, mention in there. That's a, that's a great, great podcast. Um, they talk about lots of things um, related with Linux and ham radio, what's, what's new, what's trending. Right. Uh, the question was: Have I have any experience with some of the newer radios that uh, that you can plug U USB in? Uh, no, I have not. I um, I'm kind of old fashioned and cheap, so I'm using an old 15 year old radio. <laughs> but yeah, I have noticed that though. Uh, I mean, there's there's radios coming out now that just do PSK 31, you know, right natively on the radio. You don't need a laptop and uh, a signal link. Um, but, uh, yeah, that, that's it really interesting that some of the newer rigs are coming out with that. And um, so, yeah, so give it another five years, then this this will be all antiquated and no one's going to need this stuff. Um, so the signal link company might not enjoy that too much since <laughs> they sell a lot of signal links for doing um, these kind of operations. Um, but anyway, that's uh, that really that was it um, for for me. Kind of give you some time to go back out and uh, mingle. Um, have a have a blog. Uh, I'll uh, I'll post the slides and the links uh, out on the blog there uh, when I get back on Monday. And uh, I tweet about a lot of ham radio stuff on uh, on Twitter. Um, so. So thanks for, for coming, and uh, appreciate it. Have a good rest of the Saturday. Give you a, another 30 minutes to go out and mingle. So thank you very much. <laughs>